Okay, thank you very much. Um, I talk best to slides, and there are a set of my slides in the pack, so you might find it helpful to kind of follow along with that. Um, when I was asked to take on this brief and in preparing these slides, I obviously didn't have the benefit of Stephen Barry's input, so I'm afraid you're going to have to start where my own thinking started, which is, is probably nowhere near as erudite as the first two speakers. But I, I started um, uh, with the idea that um, the big society is clearly a plank of the, the coalition's um, <laughs> Uh, policy making. David Cameron, as, uh, 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 as we heard, thinks it's his idea. Um, but as the title of this session suggests, I don't believe it's yet in focus. And that means that we as an FE sector have everything to play for. And it struck me that in the public at large, and even I think amongst some policy makers, there is a range of perceptions about what this big society means that stretches from scorn and scepticism to something that looks a little bit like Pollyanna. And where we as a sector place ourselves on the continuum of perception is going to make a huge difference about uh, our future. So what we need to do as a sector, I believe, is to get behind the label big society and focus on how we can shape the policy intent and direction so that there is no doubt about the centrality of FE's role to its realisation. And where better place to start that journey than with the A-level textbooks that I used when I taught social policy many years ago. And you'll see there some definitions that I've taken from those um, A-level textbooks. And you'll see that there are themes emerging within those of place, of culture, of working together, of relating together, of making contact. And I'm going to argue that the diversity of our learners and the extent of our reach makes us a particularly relevant and important contact for point for society and indeed for the big society. Indeed, our missions are built on inclusiveness, reaching out and widening participation. But I believe that we must evidence and communicate the breadth and depth of our work if we are to secure a prominent position for ourselves. And although the big society might be thought of as a new idea, it's born out of the kind of thinking which we as a sector have helped to create. And I'm going to quote now from uh, an IA's uh, policy document, just to please Alan over there, uh, uh, which says that the 1919 report of the Ministry of Reconstruction's Adult Education Committee emphasised the social purpose of adult education, presenting its rationale as to create a well-ordered welfare state or great society organised in support of the common good. There will be others in this room as old as me that remember with fondness learning works back in 1997 and there are others of us here that I recognise of having worked on the public value agenda around Mark Moore's work. We understand how to do this. We've just got to persuade the policy makers that the central role of FE is a no-brainer. And as I turn to the three strands of the emerging thinking, uh, I tried to categorise the work of FE using examples from my own college into the three segments. And I began to realise that these are not three separate segments, but they are very interdependent, both in terms of the impact of any specific interventions on more than one segment, and that if the segments aren't in balance, then there could be unintended consequences. People who are empowered but do not see the public sector reform going at the pace that they want it to are likely to behave in aberrant ways. And that's why the role of FE is so important. The interventions we can make are in all segments and impact on all segments. And we have a long tradition of keeping those segments in balance. One of the things I often say about my college is that outside of the hospital, it is probably the most diverse organisation in what is a very diverse city. And we have to work hard to make sure that all the elements of empowerment, 
of, um, uh, of action and of reform are in balance. So if we start with the social action uh, segment, I've used there my own college to illustrate the points of the holistic impact <coughs> of FE, not just about skills acquisition and economic well-being, but about learner engagement, which leads to democratic engagement. Um, and, and all of these things uh, leading to um, a greater uh, awareness of, of the world outside, the possibilities, Sukhvinda, for volunteering and for more enriching social networks. In terms of public sector reform, we are at the table. FE, I think, is at the table perhaps more than ever before with this government. Uh, it, it's the first time in many, many years in, in EFI when I've heard a Vice-Chancellor say to me, how does it feel to be in the preeminent sector? Um, so we have lots to contribute, we're at the table, um, but I think along with that uh, responsibility to contribute also comes a, a responsibility to be accountable and to be transparent. If we are truly to empower people in the big society then we have to be answerable to them. And my own college, as some of you will be aware, have been working on a community scorecard to do just that. And then finally of the three strands, community empowerment. And again, I think all those things that we are engaged in around raising aspirations, providing in the community education on the doorstep, working with vulnerable groups, looked after children, teenage parents, asylum seekers, giving them personal confidence, mentoring and coaching, is all the stuff that the big society is made of. The evidence is there that FE can make a massive contribution, but there are challenges to overcome before we can properly position ourselves. And I've, I've outlined for you what I consider to be the big four. We as a sector must get behind the label. We mustn't write it off with scorn or with Pollyanna views. Uh, we must make sure that our contribution, which can do so much to shape the blueprint at the local level, is balanced properly with central government's role. We need to promote our role, and we are, as you know, often one of the least understood sectors, and we have to constantly work hard to make sure that others understand what we do. And we need to think harder about how we support the big society when budgets are squeezed. So my contention is that the implications for strategic positioning of the sector look something like the, um, this, the last but one slide, where FE contributes to the big society. We help people to understand how we do that. We become more transparent and accountable as a result. And then there can be a dialogue about what society values um, and what it wants FE to do, because we can't do everything. So my starter for 10 on the narrative for FE is that FE is a key contact point and pillar of the big society. We can and we already do support its aims and add value in ways that learners and the community think are important. It doesn't mean that we do everything for nothing, but it does mean being recognised for what we can contribute and shaping what this looks like at a local level. So I guess the end point of the message is support FE and we will demonstrate the flexibility and responsiveness that the big society demands. <laughs>